In this video, I will show you an example of how to find the magnetic field inside a very long solenoid. Solenoid is an object that you can get once you take some wire and you wrap it many, many, many turns around perhaps a magnetic core, although it's not really necessary. Um, we will have a current going through the wire equal uh, to I, and so as that wire wraps around, this current goes around and around and around. The question will be, what is the magnetic field inside in the middle of that uh, long solenoid? We will work with the long solenoid so we can imagine that we are far from the edges and we don't have to worry about the, the effect of those edges. If you're tempted to use a circle around that wire just to follow the symmetry of the solenoid, um, you'll, be prob you'll be disappointed. And the reason why we can't use circle in this time for our special path is because if you use a circle, then that circle does not go through the middle of the solenoid where we need to find out the magnetic field. We need our path to always go through the point where we are trying to calculate the magnetic field. In this case, I will actually select the rectangular path to walk around and calculate the value of b.dl. Let me mark the sides of this rectangle as A and B, and I will set up two conditions. First, A will be sufficiently small so that as I move across that side, the, the value of the magnetic field doesn't change. And B, on the other hand, will be sufficiently large so as I move away from, from the solenoid all the way across the side B and I reach the end of it, the magnetic field practically is zero on the other end. So with that, you can see that the value of b.dl at the bottom portion of our path is going to be simply zero because we are so far from the solenoid that the magnetic field is zero there. Now let's look at the sites. The sites appear to be a little bit more difficult since I have no idea what the magnetic field looks like. I don't know what the value is, I don't know the direction. So I picked the direction of an, a magnitude here in some arbitrary fashion. The important thing, however, is that if I shift a little bit to the right on the other side of my rectangular path, the magnetic field will still be the same, identical vector, the same magnitude, the same direction. The difference is that on the left side, I will be moving away from the solenoid, so my infinitesimal path dl will be pointing downwards, the vector. On the right, of course, the vector dl will be upward. So now let's look at the value of the dot product of b dot dl. For the left side, as we are moving along that side, we will have b dl and cosine of the angle between those two vectors. I haven't marked it, but whatever that, vec that angle is. On the other side, as we move along the right side, we will have b dot dl for the right side, which will have the same magnitude of the magnetic field and the same magnitude for the vector dl, uh, but now the angle is not theta, but it's 180 minus theta. So remembering that cosine of 180 minus theta is simply minus cosine theta, we notice that Regardless of what the value of the overall integral of the left and the right is, if I look at them simultaneously, they will be canceling each other. So it's a clever trick that allows us to avoid this calculation of um, the integral that appears actually at first sight quite complicated. And so we're left with the value of b dot dl for the top portion of my path, which goes across in the middle of, of the solenoid. In this case, Again, remembering that the magnetic field does not change along the side A. That's why I chose that side A to be sufficiently small. I can take it out of the integral and the whole value of the left-hand side in Ampere's law becomes equal to the magnetic field, whatever value is there inside the solenoid, times the side A. And combining it with the right-hand side, what I have is that B A has to be equal to mu naught times the current, the enclosed current. But the enclosed current is simply the current I that goes around each turn, so I need just to figure out across how many turns I have gone and enclosed and just multiply by the current I that each of those turns is carrying. So the question is how many turns have I gone across as I moved across the side A? 
We will get to this in a second, but first let's write that the magnetic field in this case will be equal to mu naught, the number of enclosed turns, times the current divided by A. So now let's, let's look at the solenoid. As soon as the solenoid is manufactured, it has a specific and defined property of number of turns per unit length. We know that. It doesn't change. It's, de it's defined as the number of turns N per unit length L, the total length of the solenoid. If we know that quantity, then we can actually figure out through how many turns have we gone as we went along the side A. That will simply be equal to the number of turns per unit length N multiplied by our side A. So with that value, we go back to our result here from Ampere's law, where it says magnetic field is equal to mu naught and enclosed I over A, and, repla and we replace N enclosed with the value of the number of turns per unit length multiplied by the side A. After cancelling A, we end up with our result for the magnetic field inside a very long solenoid that is equal to mu naught, the permeability of free space, the number of turns per unit length for that particular solenoid, multiplied by the current that is flowing through the wires.